Hello from the Dukas Copy TV studio in Geneva. We're talking about the interventions of the Swiss National Bank and we're having a review, also a look into the future, with Dr. Anton Golub. He is quantitative researcher of Olsen Financial Technologies. Anton, welcome to the studio. Thank you for inviting me. So could you give us an overview of the recent interventions of the Swiss National Bank? Sure. So the Swiss National Bank tried to protect the Swiss economy from excessive uh, movements in the exchange rate. At the beginning it did so by secretly selling Swiss franc uh, and accumulating other currencies. When that failed to succeed in preventing the excessive price moves, it established an official floor for the Euro-Swiss exchange rate of 120 and pretended this can uh, last forever. Unfortunately, the, the measurement was not successful and as a consequence, the Swiss National Bank accumulated a large balance sheet. Uh, the, since the risk of a of large balance sheet outweighed the benefits of the uh, intervention measurement, the Swiss National Bank decided to drop the floor. So the actions of the Swiss National Bank, although well intended, didn't seem to be successful before. So what was the tipping point that led the Swiss National Bank to do such a massive action? So the, I have to stress that the problem with the Swiss franc was and still is the lack of liquidity. And this might seem counterintuitive because the spot for an exchange market is the largest in the world with a daily turnover in excess of two trillion dollars. But if we just consider this large number per second, then we will realize that it's actually minuscule. For instance, for Swiss franc, the they, uh, the second turned over is only one million. So if we have a big trade, it can have a large price impact. This is relevant because of the key insight of market microstructure research, which says that the price impact of a transaction depends on liquidity. So if a liquidity is below a critical threshold, then the price impact is uh, disproportionate. And especially dangerous are phases when the exchange rate overshoots fundamentals, the fundamentals of Swiss economy. Uh, during those phases, the heterogeneity of market participants is adversely affected. So if we have an imbalance between buyers and sellers, and if we have an illiquid market, then we can easily see excessive price movements. So in fact, when Swiss National Bank decided to drop the floor, uh, the risk management systems of banks and brokers automatically triggered mar margin calls by uh, selling euros and buying Swiss franc into an illiquid market and we experienced a very large price move. Mm -hmm. So you also mentioned that liquidity is the main problem. So what should the Swiss National Bank have done instead? So it's important to stress that Swiss National Bank was implementing static interve intervention strategies. And I would argue that Swiss National Bank should implement a dynamic intervention strategy where tick by tick exchange rates are monitored and during critical moments the central bank would provide liquidity to the marketplace. Uh, with the dynamic intervention strategy, the central bank would prevent disproportionate price moves but it would not accumulate a large balance sheet. And it's, it's important to stress that uh, with the dyna dynamic intervention strategies, the central bank cannot prevent the appreciation of a Swiss franc altogether, but it can prevent severe price movements. Mm -hmm. And so actually, did you have, uh, it, or start again, do you actually have examples where this has been already done? So, so far, dynamic intervention strategies have not been implemented. Every central bank in the world so far, and we have experienced this in the last few years, have, has only implemented static intervention strategies, where they commit themselves to buying a asset or a security or an exchange rates <coughs> and just keep on holding it indefinitely. Mm -hmm. So what's left now in the arsenal of uh, the central bank is raising interest rates. Actually, uh, what costs and benefits go along with this measure? So in extreme situations, as a measurement of last resort to prevent the currency from collapsing, the central bank can raise daily interest rates. But usually this is done at a huge cost to the real economy, the economy we live in. For instance, in the beginning of 2000s, the Turkish central bank had to raise daily interest rates to 8,000% per to prevent the currency from collapsing. 
But when he did so, he drove many companies into bankruptcies uh, with over one million people losing their jobs. So there is actually a solution to this, to the re real cost to the economy, but the solution is not obvious. And I'll explain why. The trading in financial markets today is done extremely fast in a matter of milliseconds. But uh, one would think that the processing of these transactions is also done extremely fact, uh, fast and it is state of the art, but that is not the case. The processing of a transaction is batch based uh, and the settlement occurs two days after the transaction has taken place. So the current system actually induces uh, massive inefficiencies into the financial markets uh, because intraday traders don't have to pay interest. In other words, they can freely short the currency and circumvent the raise of the interest rate. This is relevant because in the foreign exchange markets, more than 90% of the transactions have a duration of less than 24 hours, meaning those traders do not pay interest. So a clear cut solution is actually to allow immediate settlement and that would introduce second by second interest payments. This would provide a new degree of freedom to the uh, central bank because in extreme situations, it can raise ultra short term interest rates get the buyers and sellers into balance, but not affecting the real economy. Now we have an appreciation of the Swiss franc. Actually, to wrap up, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this movement and development? Uh, I would argue that the recent move in the Swiss franc with, uh, will actually have an adverse impact on the Swiss economy. Firstly, uh, because all of the exports from the Swiss economy will not be a lot more expensive. And finally, I would argue that even with the recent price moves in the Swiss franc, it is still cheap as a ha safe haven, meaning a lot more money will flow into the uh, Swiss financial system. But I would argue that this money will go into the real estate market and push the prices even higher than they are now. Mm -hmm. And Golub from Olsen Financial Technologies, thank you very much for being here and sharing your expertise with us. Thank you for inviting me. And thanks for watching. Do make sure to keep clicking back on the Dukas Copy TV website for latest updates and exclusive interviews. Have a great day and see you next time.